Former Premier of New South Wales Bob Carr recently tweeted, Follow Singapore and legislate no medical or hospital expenses to be reimbursed to people who are not vaccinated, without medical justification, and then contract COVID. You ignored warnings and got the disease. You pay for your willful stupidity, not the rest of us. He also said that medical workers shouldn't have to look after simpletons who believe rubbish on the web and ignore medical advice, and because of ignorance and gullibility, carrying COVID these nutters can send asthma sufferers into ICU, cost to lives. Okay, so apart from the fact that vaccinated people can carry COVID as well, are they considered nutters? He labelled unvaccinated people as willfully stupid, simpletons, ignorant, gullible, and nutters. Is that really the best way to convince unvaccinated people to get vaccinated? I think that would make people more likely to dig their heels in. So his tactic is a very bad one. It's not going to result in any more people getting vaccinated. If anything, it might turn people off. Bob Carr just called me a simpleton. I better go get vaccinated. So why is he saying it? I suppose to get some free publicity so he can sell his new book. Anyway, Australia has Medicare, which is a publicly funded universal healthcare insurance scheme. If we start saying vaccinated people can't receive that healthcare or have to pay for it, then perhaps we should start refunding all the tax they've contributed towards funding it. Furthermore, in Bob Carr's opinion, because the vaccinated have ignored warnings and ignored the medical advice, should we now start denying medical care to others who have ignored medical advice? Smokers. They knew the risks, but they continued smoking anyway. Should they pay for their lung cancer treatment or their emphysema bill? Actually, New Zealand have brought out the big guns and intend on criminalising smoking for all people born after 2008. They will never legally be able to smoke a cigarette in their lifetime. From my knowledge of prohibition, it never works out very well. When they tried to prohibit alcohol in the 1920s and 30s, it was very popular at first, but ended up being a complete disaster. Organised crime, corruption, dangerous moonshine, job loss, tax loss, disrespect for the law. The criminal justice system became completely overburdened, not to mention that drinking rates actually went up. Alcohol became a luxury item. It was a symbol of affluence and status. Anyway, all in all, prohibition was a complete disaster. Alcohol. If the unvaccinated should pay for their medical care, then surely so should people who drink alcohol. According to the AIHW, alcohol is the fifth highest risk factor contributing to disease burden in Australia, much higher than COVID ever will. Actually, according to the ABS, COVID is the 38th leading cause of death in Australia, with alcohol-induced death rates increasing 8.3% during the pandemic. Who would have thought that people would start drinking more when they're locked in their homes all day long? Junk food, obesity, diabetes. I presume people who cannot control how much food goes in their mouths will have to start paying for their own hospital treatment. Obesity contributes almost twice as much towards the burden of disease in Australia than does alcohol. Contact sports. Tens of thousands of people in Australia are hospitalised every year thanks to playing sport, clogging up our already overburdened healthcare system. Concussion, brain injury, fractured bones, sprained ligaments, the list goes on. They knew the risks and went against the sound medical advice. Perhaps they should pay for their medical bills as well. Non-contact sports. Tennis players are often getting injured, with 10% of injuries needing surgical treatment, mainly for fractures, knee surgeries, meniscal tears, and Achilles tendon ruptures. They knew the risks. Make them pay. Motorcyclists, or even just cyclists. Motorcyclists are overrepresented in vehicle fatality statistics. Consequently, if they get into an accident, they should have to pay for their own medical care because they knew the risks and were warned. Drivers of cars. Just because you drive a car and have less chance of dying than on a motorcycle doesn't mean you get off scot-free. Vehicles are dangerous. If you drive too fast, or look at your mobile phone, or drive tired or fatigued and cause a crash, then only rightly you must pay for all your own medical bills. Jumping out of planes. Obviously, if you jump out of planes and you get injured, you should foot the bill. Sound medical advice states that people shouldn't voluntarily fall from high places. Bungee jumping. Same rule applies as jumping out of planes. 
scuba diving. If you're stupid enough to go into the ocean or put your five-year-old son in the ocean and he gets bitten by a shark, sorry, medical advice states that sharks are dangerous. Hence, you'll be paying your own bills. The beach. If you go to the beach without your shirt on or don't wear sunscreen and a hat, and then later need pricey skin cancer surgery, I'm sorry, you'll have to pay for it now because you ignored all the sound medical advice. Not to mention if you voluntarily go into the dangerous water, shark attack, jellyfish sting, drowning, the risk is simply too great. Snow sports, frostbite, hypothermia, muscle sprains and strains, snow blindness, and sunburn. Yep, if you participate in this high-risk activity, you deserve to pay your own medical bills. Actually, if you're a human, and I assume you are if you're watching this video, according to the medical advice, your risk of death is 100%. By waking up in the morning, there's a chance you'll do something stupid and wind up in the hospital. Consequently, every human will have to start paying for their own health care from now on, or else be locked out of society. This is the only way to make you learn. Yes, Bob Carr, perhaps the unvaccinated are going against the health advice, but guess what? So is everybody else on this planet.